All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about Virginia watersheds and topography. Now, remember a watershed is land that water flows across or through, so on the surface or underground, on its way to a larger body of water like a large lake, like the Great Lakes, or the ocean, which is where our water flows into. And it's made up of several river systems that flow from higher elevations, so up high, like the tops of mountains, and then works its way down to lower elevations. Ridge lines or divides separate our watersheds. Now there are three major regional watersheds that Virginia waters flow into. Um, there are several local watersheds um, that make up the watersheds of Virginia, but there are three major regional ones. Now the three regional watersheds are the Chesapeake Bay, the North Carolina Sounds, and the Gulf of Mexico. Now here's just a larger map. You'll notice that the map, um, if you look really carefully, Virginia is outlined in white. And most of the water in Northern Virginia and Central Virginia is going to start flowing into the Chesapeake Bay. But you'll notice down south in the blue and the green, Southern Virginia, the water is split between the Gulf of Mexico and North Carolina Sounds. Now the Chesapeake Bay watershed, as we discussed in our last video, is the largest estuary in the United States. So remember an estuary is where fresh river water is going to meet that salty ocean water. And um, this drainage basin spans over up to 64,000 square miles. And it's also the largest coastal body of water in the world. Now, six states in one district make up the Chesapeake Bay watershed. The states are Delaware, Maryland, New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia, and that district is the District of Columbia or DC. Um, we would just want to include that because it's not a state, but that water still flows into the Chesapeake Bay. Now here is a topographic map, or a couple of them. On the right, the larger image is a topographic map of the Chesapeake Bay or the northern part of it. Um, you'll notice in the map there are lots of different colors. The greens could represent trees or green land. We see lots of red, which represent roads. Um, if we were to zoom in even more, you'd see a lot of different lines. Um, on the left, we have a smaller picture. This is a zoomed in image of where we live in Woodbridge. So this topographic map is of Woodbridge. The water in Woodbridge, Virginia, it's going to eventually drain into that Potomac River which is actually one of the major rivers that drains into the Chesapeake Bay watershed, meaning all the water that um, is in Woodbridge will eventually be part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And everyone that lives in Woodbridge, their actions that affect water is also going to affect the Chesapeake Bay. So it's really helpful to be able to read topographic maps. And this way we can determine what watershed is why um, and look at different boundaries and stuff. So first, let's discuss what a to topographic map is. A topographic map is um, a map that shows different locations of major geological features like mountains or valleys, um, plains, things like that. And it uses special lines called contour lines um, that show elevation in the land's features. Now elevation is kind of like the height. So if you're at a lower elevation, um, you might have zero for at sea level, and the higher you get, the higher the number. Um, and contour lines, so think about um, if you were to put your hand in a fist and you looked at your knuckles, the knuckles could represent mountain tops. And if we were to draw lines around those mountain tops, you'd notice that they're kind of close together towards the peak, and they start to spread out the farther and far farther you go down. Um, those lines are called contour lines. Um, we also have a better image here. Um, we have a 2D side view of a mountain range that has Mount Riddle, Mount Ginger, and Mount Tipster. They're going to take that mountain and they're going to do an eagle's eye view. So just the picture below it, not the one where it's still side views. Um, you'll notice that there are these lines that kind of look like circles that are very oddly shaped. Um, these are those contour lines. So if you were to look at the side view again, those lines um, they get stacked on top of each other and they assign elevation to it. So how high above sea level you are, starting at zero. So sea level is at zero. Now your assignment is to design a mountain with one to two peaks and you're going to draw that simple side view. So I have an image of it for you below. You're not going to draw any lines in it. It just has to be a plane. Um, don't worry about drawing lines on your side view. 
So we have one with a steep slope and a gentle slope. Um, you just want to put one or two peaks, kind of just like a very simple one line drawing, no contour lines or anything like that. And we're going to actually create a 3D model of this mountain that you did. And we're going to, um, after we create the 3D model, we're going to make a topographic map of your mountain that you designed. So another thing I want you to think about though in your notes is what do you think creates the boundaries for the different uh, watersheds and how do you think that would look on a topographic map? So I want you to think about what topographic maps show, um, what separates different watersheds, and then how do you think that would look if we were to make a topographic map of that? So you have two things to do tonight. Create a simple side view of a mountain and however you want your mountain to be, it can be a very steep and sharp peaks or very gentle rolly hills. That is up to you as long as it has one to two peaks on it. Just a simple side view. And then we're going to create that tomorrow in class with some clay or like Play-Doh. And then I also need you to answer the question um, right here. And then we'll talk about it all tomorrow.